Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. I wanted to uh, make a video. I got a new new toy to play with, and uh, actually I found some interesting stuff with it already. Um, just recently I ordered the uh, DG8 SAQ Vector Network Analyzer, uh, the Model 3E, um, from SDR Kits uh, over in the UK. And this covers from 1 kilohertz up to 1.3 gigahertz, uh, a lot higher in frequency than I tend to work, but uh, uh, I've been actually I've been working on a, a spectrum analyzer and a couple of the filters that I needed for that I didn't have good tools to, uh, to optimize those filters um, so I thought that this would uh, would help me um, as I, I work on that I've got it kind of hooked up to a little test jig here and over here is a, a component that uh, came from a junk box uh, of a, a local silent key that I've been going through. Uh, it's got three pins and it's labeled Z309, Z309. Uh, I have Googled and couldn't find anything uh, for that. Uh, did a continuity test and the center pin is actually connected to the, the case. The case does have uh, a small screw hole there to, uh, to hold it that's, that's hooked. So. Uh, it mounted on the, uh, a case somehow. This does look new instead of uh, removed. Uh, the pins are insulated. To be honest, when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was a um, uh, a reed relay with uh, like one one end going to the coil and the uh, the ground on the case, and the other two's being contact the clean uh, clear closed uh, when it was powered. Uh, but with the marking Z, a lot of times Z means uh, a crystal, crystal filter, or something like that. Um, and it, when I tested it, uh, it definitely did not look like uh, like a relay. So that actually gives me a uh, an excuse to use the um, uh, my new uh, uh, vector network analyzer and uh, and characterize the uh, the device a little bit and uh, see what we've got. So we got this connected to the, the network analyzer here. Uh, this is the output. Basically, uh, if you're not familiar with them, um, th so this is almost like a transmitter coming over, uh, injecting a signal uh, onto one of the pins here. Uh, it, it also measures what uh, it's reflected power, but that's also, you might think of that as uh, uh, something like uh, the standing wave ratio. Uh, but in, in effect, it's measuring the complex impedance uh, of how much uh, comes it, it, transmit power comes out and then then comes back. It can measure both the uh, the magnitude and the uh, the phase angle, which lets it calculate the uh, the impedance that it's transmitting into. Uh, on the other side, there's a um, a receive port, and so I'm coming out of uh, this device. The center pin is grounded, uh, but I'm coming out. Um, this is really kludged together, but I can. I uh, can actually use correction factors and characterize this and uh, did a pretty good job of, uh, uh, of being able to just factor out the, uh, the test jig itself. Um, so I've, I've got, uh, on the other side, I've got some kind of signal that's making it through that's going into a receiver and I can measure again the, uh, the magnitude and phase angle of that, uh, which lets me do a pretty good job of, uh, of characterizing uh, the device. So I'll put... Uh, I will put a, uh, a screenshot up instead of uh, this in just a second, but I can do a single sweep or I can do a continuous sweep. Um, so here, if I do a single sweep, uh, it's going through and uh, it's injecting, uh, it, everything is referenced to zero dB. Uh, so it's injecting the signal and you can see that it's dropping off there and then it's picking back up. Uh, oh, the over in red uh, is the uh, the impedance uh, mapped on a, a Smith chart. Um, so there we've got it. Um, up in the corner, uh, it's uh, telling us that uh, I've got two markers on there. Marker one is the uh, the maximum, and that's at uh, twenty eight point two seven. I'm running this from ten to thirty, and actually I ran this earlier from. Uh, uh, about uh, 20 kilohertz up to uh, 100 megahertz. So I knew I knew where I needed to focus. Um, 
the marker one is uh, up at 28 megahertz uh, showing a negative 2.5 uh, DB so basically the insertion loss kind of is uh, around uh, negative 3 DB once you get far away from the uh, the notch but this is a notch filter um, that's at around 17.95 megahertz uh, and at that frequency it is down uh, around 41.9 so around 42 um, so about 40 DB of uh, of loss, um, everything is normalized to, and over there in the red is basically the uh, the impedance. So everything is normalized to a 50 ohm load on this. Uh, so it's roughly 50 ohms with uh, uh, what would that be? That'd be around uh, 15 uh, uh, ohms of uh, of reactive impedance. Um, so it looks looks like it's pretty well matched. Uh, probably something around 50 ohms is what it's designed to uh, to, to terminate into uh, and be fed with, uh, which is what I am feeding it with and, and what it is terminated with uh, with on this. Uh, so what it is is basically a, a band stop filter uh, or a notch filter uh, for just under 18 megahertz. So what we seem to have is a, um, uh, a notch filter or a band stop filter uh, of around 18 megahertz. Um, if I had approached this using how I normally would test something like this, I'd, I kind of thought it might be a, a crystal filter. Um, typically most filters are band pass filters, like a 455 megahertz or kilohertz uh, IF filter. It passes 455 um, kilohertz, a 10.7 megahertz filter for um, a receiver is typically going to pass 10.7 so uh, you don't run into notch filters um, especially with this sharp of a response very often in in uh, receivers I'm, and I, I have no idea what this uh, came from uh, that could be to pull out the the carrier maybe there's a, if you were trying to generate something along the lines of a double si sideband signal um, you might use something like this to, to, to pull out the carrier um, uh, you might use this to, to filter out a second harmonic or a third harmonic um, or something of that sort um, so it's kind of unusual so one thing that that does make sense though is uh, to take a quick look uh, we know that it's around 18 megahertz um, and, and take a quick look at just how sharp it is. But if I had tested this the way I normally would have tested it before I had the vector uh, analyzer, uh, I probably would have started down at around 400 kilohertz, run the, uh, the frequency up using a frequency generator up to around maybe 10, 15 uh, megahertz because I, I would have expected it to be, uh, if it is a crystal filter, um, like I said, it would, I would typically expect it to be a band pass filter and I would typically expect it to be something like 455 kilohertz or, or uh, 10, uh, 10.7 megahertz or one of the more common uh, IF frequencies. Not, uh, you know, a, a band stop filter at, uh, at 18 megahertz, it's just not something I would have uh, expected to uh, to run into. But let's take uh, a little closer look at it on the uh, uh, on the the screen. Do do a trace, uh, maybe a, a kilohertz wide or so, like the or megahertz wide on each side to uh, to see just how sharp the uh, the filter characteristics are. So to do that, I've set this to uh, 17.5 and 18.5, and now I'm going to uh, to do a uh, a sweep. So we're going to have one megahertz from one side to the other, and you can see that it's not uh, it's not a super sharp uh, response. So it was 40 dB down, um, but now if you look at where the the 6 dB points are, those 10 of those, or each of those is 100 kilohertz. Um, that's a that's a pretty pretty wide. That, that definitely is not the kind of filter that you'd use to pull a carrier out of something like a uh, 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 a double sideband signal or an AM signal to turn it into a double sideband signal. Um, much much broader response, uh, fairly deep 
notch, um, which makes me think that it is uh, probably something that's designed to get out like a second harmonic or a third harmonic or something of that sort. Um, so anyway, that, uh, that, that gives us a little bit of better idea of what this might be used for. So there you have it, um, for what it's worth, but uh, it's kind of interesting. It does show the capabilities, the, the um, uh, vector analyzer, um, cost, uh, I think in pounds, it was around uh, 450, 500 pounds, somewhere in there. Um, and with the conver conversion rate right now, uh, got, a, got a pretty good deal. It came very, very quickly. Um, I ordered it, uh, it's early November, and I ordered it uh, thinking I might have it in time to play with it uh, around the Christmas holidays, and uh, it showed up uh, in about a week. So um, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, it's got the calibration kit um, that lets me, um, you know, if I want to do some, some more serious, more accurate testing, I've got the capability of doing it. Uh, something like the, the simple jig that I, I showed you, that's, uh, um, it's handy. It's very handy for quick and dirty tests like this. Uh, it lets me do things like uh, run a test actually on the, the board. You might have noticed uh, there's a 14.99 uh, megahertz crystal that came out of a um, uh, an old CB transceiver that I tore apart and uh, I was able to, to hook that up and test that also just to, to see what the response looks like. Um, so as long as I'm below 30 megahertz or so um, the, the jig just makes it very easy to, um, to do the just quick test on uh, different types of components, identify what they are. If I need to characterize it um, with more accuracy, I can I can do that with uh, uh, by being a little more careful about the leads and and stuff that I uh, I use. So anyway, the, the, this is um, it's um, interesting. I think it's going to let me take a lot of parts that I've got uh, laying around. I've got a lot of uh, old filters, IF transformers, and stuff like that. That this will let me. Uh, uh, do a little bit more to uh, to characterize them and understand uh, maybe the design parameters they were um, uh, constructed to and uh, where they're a fit and where they're not a fit. Like on this one, seeing that the um, the band response is so uh, so wide, um, I know that this isn't going to be. It's, I'm not going to notch out like a, a carrier or a heterodyne signal or something like that uh, with this. Uh, on the other hand, if I need to to take out uh, the second harmonic of a nine megahertz uh, oscillator, this would work great. So um, I don't know that I'll ever find a use for it, but uh, at least now I know what it is, which is uh, something. Uh, the uh, likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Thanks.